This lesson will show how to take a quadratic relation of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c and apply a procedure called completing the square which really changes this into an equivalent form that we can easily see where the vertex is. Now for quadratic relations the vertex is a very important point and if the quadratic relation happens to open upward then we have what's called a local minimum point or a minima point. If the quadratic relation opens downward we have a highest point which we'll call normally a local maxima point. And in the first example we're given y equals x minus 3 squared plus 1 and we're going to expand this into what's called standard form which is the same as the y equals ax squared plus bx plus c form. So we're going to take our original quadratic and we're expand the x minus 3 squared. If you remember the shortcut for expanding a perfect square, remember you go x squared, this is x squared, and then x times negative 3 is negative 3x, doubled is negative 6x, and then negative 3 squared is 9, and of course we have plus the 1. And then the only thing we have to do is add the 9 and the 1 to get 10 in the end. So in standard form, this quadratic relation would be y equals x squared minus 6x plus 10. Now the problem that we're going to deal with in this note is how we take this kind of a quadratic relation and put it back in that form so that we can see, for example, that the vertex is at 0 0.3,1. So that's the question we're going to deal with here in this example. How do we put it back into that form? And what you're really doing is if you take a look at the first two terms, the x squared minus 6x, and maybe we'll start looking down here, is we want to break this 10 down into or do something arithmetically so that we have the number after the negative 6x here. So the first three terms, the x squared, the minus 6x, and whatever that number is, that the first three of those terms together, if we factor, we'll have a perfect square trinomial. And notice that that 9, so we're actually if we change the 10 into 9 and 1, then x squared minus 6x plus 9, that's the perfect square trinomial that would factor back into x minus 3 all squared. Now, where that 9 comes from is the 9 is actually half of the negative 6 squared. Or, if we kind of work backwards, remembering where this negative 6x comes from when we take this uh, x minus 3 and we square it. Remember that comes from taking the x and multiplying by the negative 3 and doubling it. So if we perform the reverse operation, what we'll do is we'll take the negative 6 here and we'll divide it by 2 and then square it and that will give us that 9 the number that will make the x squared minus 6x and then that 9 a perfect square trinomial. So negative 6 divided by 2 and then squared. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. And so when we square negative 3, we get 9. Now what we're going to do with that 9 is this. We're in, and this is the general procedure. Is We'll take that 9 and we'll add it and subtract it to this quadratic relation. Now, in net, when you add 9 and subtract 9, you're really adding 0. But you see, the reason I want that 9 there is so that x squared minus 6x plus 9, the first three terms, that's a perfect square trinomial. So I subtract 9 to keep the equivalent form of the original equation, because I'm really adding 0. So if you take a look at the x squared minus 6x plus 9, that will factor into x minus 3 squared, and then negative 9 and 10 add to 1. There's the 1 in the end. So factoring x squared minus 6x plus 9 into x minus 3 squared, we get the original form, the same form as we have right here. Now, a couple things to note. When you're factoring x squared minus 6x plus 9, this negative 3 here, is half of the negative 6 from the negative 6x terms. It's also the 3 is also the square root of 9. And also that negative 3 is actually the number that you squared here to get this 9. 
notice that again it's half of the negative six so there's there's several different ways you can get you can do that factoring 